Greetings, folks. This is not a review. The title didn't say review, neither did the thumbnail, so ease up off my back about it, but I do want to talk about something, and that is that new 8-core i7-10875H. Wow, that's a mouthful. So I've seen all the reviews, just like many of you, of course, have. The performance on that is very underwhelming. We didn't really realize how underwhelming it was until Ryzen came knocking at our door, and that 4800H, HS, 4900, just a spectacular CPU. Well, Electronics comes along, giving us the best version of this 8-core solution that we can from Intel, and I think it does a very good job at the expense of pulling two to three times the wattage. And there's just a lot of stuff that I'm going to talk about and reveal in this video talking about this CPU within their new covert line of laptops. Before you is the Mac 17. The review is coming soon, so subscribe. When that releases, it's going to be spectacular. This laptop is equipped with dual channel memory spec'd out at 2933. Now within the BIOS, you can adjust the memory timings, frequency, it is very in-depth, so be careful in here. And I do not have anything to reveal as far as memory overclocking today. I'm going to need a substantial amount of time in order to produce results that are reliable to reveal to you. Nonetheless, there's still some performance left on the table, which I think is very neat. And the enthusiasts out there should really be able to value and appreciate that level of tunability within the laptop. Now there is undervolting capability on this machine as well. The Plundervolt medication does not apply on this BIOS at this time, which is great. We can undervolt within the BIOS, but only to a negative 50 millivolt. I'm working with electronics to try to get approval for a higher undervolt, but within today's video, you are going to see just how little we are able to undervolt on this 14 nanometer plus 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 version of these Intel CPUs. No doubt, once you keep making the same thing over and over and over again, while that may be the definition of insanity, and I wouldn't disagree, you're bound to get just a little bit better at it, and the undervolt capability on this CPU is nowhere near as large as we have seen on previous generations of the Skylake architecture. So let's go ahead and proceed, keeping it simple to begin with, and then we'll break it down, starting with some benchmarks. Cinebench R15, single core performance, just over 200 points, and multi-core, typically around 1,800 points. Cinebench 20, single core performance, nearly 500 points, multi-core, over 4,200 points. My highest safe recommended undervolt for the CPU at 80 millivolts gets our score at nearly 4,300 points. 100 millivolt undervolt was stable in most benchmarks, but it was not game stable. Setting the undervolt to negative 0.125 will immediately cause WHEA rounding errors, followed by a reboot of your laptop. Firestrike's physics score consistently over 21,000 points. Meanwhile, Time Spy's CPU score over 10,000 points. Okay, so right off the bat, you've got to be wondering, what did you do here? What's going on? All right, so the secret to success for starters on this particular laptop is the first and second power limits are just set to 120 watts, and that is pretty awesome. All the other manufacturers out there typically will run it maybe up to 62 watts on a short-term power boost, and then long-term power boost bringing it down to 45. And that's been a pretty traditional safe bet across most manufacturers featuring these i7 processors. And that's fine, but Electronics wanted to give us the most powerful solution that they could, and they've definitely done so. And of course, at the expense of some thermal performance in which I will be revealing in more detail in this video. Now, as far as the WHEA rounding errors with that negative 125 undervolt, definitely expect that. It was nearly instantaneous locking once that was applied. With the 100 millivolt undervolt on the CPU, I was able to get through Cinebench type benchmarks. I was unable to get through Time Spy, and I might be able to get within a few minutes of a various game, it would typically lock up. That's not a good thing. So I found that the 80 millivolt undervolt to be 100% stable. I have been using this laptop now for eight days at this point. I have well over 20 hours of time into it, and I'm very confident with that level of undervolt with a little bit more room to spare. So I think this should be a safe bet moving forward, and hopefully we can continue on with undervolting on these electronics laptops. All right, so let's proceed with a little bit more in-depth testing 
Let's rock and roll. Using NVIDIA Shadow Play on the same machine we are doing these benchmarks on, we have Cinebench R20 for 11 runs back to back with an ambient temperature of 78 degrees Fahrenheit in the small office for maximum heat soak. Despite this thermal environment and testing methods, we still get a Cinebench R20 score tend to level off at nearly 4,000 points. Using an exterior camera and no longer recording with shadow play, followed by these 11 runs, we are instantly able to gain an additional 100 points back again on Cinebench R20, despite the maximum heat soak within this chassis. Hopefully that test made sense. There was a lot going on there. Cinebench R20 run 13 times back to back. Keep in mind I was recording using shadow play that offers a performance hit. And hopefully I was able to reveal how that hit was removed once I was doing the off-screen camera footage on this particular laptop. Nonetheless, when you get your Mac 17 and you fire up Cinebench R20 and everything's up to date, you should have no problem getting benchmark scores of around 4,200 points repeatedly but we were running in a very hot environment. We were recording on top of that, and I put this in an absolute worst case scenario, and hopefully I was able to explain that pretty well within that short clip that you just previously watched. Now let's move on to thermal performance and frequency performance using A to 64 and Handbrake. A to 64 is a nice stress test, and it's a 30-day free trial for most people out there unless they've already gone through that before. And it's not very good at offering anything of productivity wise, whereas Handbrake is, and that's really nice to encode and turn certain files into various other files. So they work more efficiently with other pieces of software, and it's just a very nice tool for me to use as I often use it. And it tends to put the CPU in a higher end worst case scenario. So let's reveal what the thermal performance and frequency performance is using A to 64 and Handbrake. Our CPU runs in the mid 90 degrees Celsius on average after long runs within A to 64. Let's not forget the ambient temperature in the small office at 78 degrees Fahrenheit for maximum heat soak. The average clock speed is around 4 gigahertz. Now an 8 core boost on the CPU is supposed to hit 4.3 gigahertz. We have no such luck running A to 64. Now you will see this average around 3.9 to 4.1. So overall, 4 gigahertz under a load like this is probably far better than anything else out there on the market. Of course, at the expense of some heat. The exact same scenario applies to Handbrake as well. Despite that, this CPU did manage to beat some of my fastest Handbrake render tests so far. Nonetheless, when you're running benchmarks or various render encoding such as these, do expect the CPU to get past that 90 degrees Celsius unless you're running aftermarket thermal interface material. Bottom line is this. We all want the Ryzen-based CPUs inside these laptops. And everything that we have seen so far with this CPU and all the other laptops has been very lackluster from a performance standpoint. Electronics at least opened up those power limits from the factory, is allowing us to do some undervolting, is allowing us to be able to tweak the memory timings and frequency to ultimately give the enthusiast all the tools that they need for a laptop in order to tune it and get the kind of results that they hope to get. So in other words, this is probably the best version of these Intel 10th generation 8-core CPUs that we are going to see. Unless some of the other manufacturers want to go down that road, open up the power limits, and allow a little bit of frequency tuning within their memory and memory timings, I just don't see that happening. But at the end of the day, those that really want those Ryzen CPUs with those higher-end NVIDIA GPUs, we're gonna have to wait, whether it's towards the end of this year or the end of next year, there isn't anything in sight that's going to be featuring anything better than the RTX 2060. And if that's okay and good with you, then it's most certainly good with me. But as somebody who has a tech channel and I read a lot of comments, this is definitely not okay for a lot of people out there, despite perhaps it being okay with you. So this is my overview of this CPU inside their new covert line. I am far more impressed with it than I thought I could be, and I would like to see what they can do later on down the road. So subscribe to this if you want to see my review on this Mac 17 as it will be coming up here hopefully soon. That's going to do it, folks. I'm Bob of All Trades. I'll see you in the next video.